When you think this post is done, it's probably not done. There are lots of updates. So this is coming from the child's perspective. It's from r slash relationships. My family is blaming me for a fight after my half-brother destroyed pictures of my mom. Throw away so I don't cause any more damage than I've already done. So a bit of backstory. I, 16 male, recently moved in with my dad, 47 male, after my mom died. Dad's never really been in my life, and he and my mom were never married. He has a wife, S, 48 female, and two other kids, 14 female and 18 male. So it's 18, 16, 14. So OP is 16 writing in. Mm-hmm. The two kids from his dad's marriage are 18 and 14. It comes out that he had an affair. Well, we'll put them, we'll do the math. So when I ended up moving in with my dad, it obviously caused a lot of issues with the rest of the family. Nobody wanted me there and basically gave me the cold shoulder. S, M, and A tend to talk with each other in French because they know that I can't understand them, and my dad has tried to force an English-only rule in the house with little luck. For the first month, M just ignored me completely, even though he and I were forced to share a room since the house didn't have any space. I tried to be nice, but I just lost my mom, and it hurts, and it's been so much change so quickly. Two days ago, though, I found the postcards and pictures and letters from my mom ripped into a bunch of pieces and scattered all across my bed. I kept them in a box under my bed, and M had been the only one in the house with me at the time, so I know he did it. I started yelling at him, and we ended up verbally fighting right as S and A got back home. I can't remember what M said anymore because I was so mad that I wasn't thinking straight, but I remember hitting him. We both exchanged a couple of punches and I accidentally elbowed A in the nose while she and S were trying to separate us, so she was bleeding too. When my dad got home, we were all still yelling and S was trying to throw me out of the house. I couldn't stop crying because I just had my only actual photos of my mom ruined and I don't know if we can fix them. My dad tried to settle everyone down but didn't end up punishing M because there's no actual proof that he did it. I got in trouble for throwing the first punch, and S is still trying to convince my dad to send me somewhere else. Both A and M keep telling me that I ruined their family by coming here, but I didn't really have a choice. I know I shouldn't have hit M, but I was so mad and didn't think. I know I shouldn't have escalated anything, but am I really the one at fault here? I don't know how I'm supposed to live with M anymore. What are your thoughts about the first part? I'm processing this one still. Yeah. This is a lot of dynamic. Yeah. You know, um, M is uh, is 18. M. He's an adult. Yeah. Uh, 16. OP is 16. He's a baby. 16. There is a adult... uh, having a fight with a 16-year-old. Um, you know, that's a family. I mean, the, the father really does need to, to step up to the plate to try to, to work this thing through with M. Obviously, M is upset because his father had an affair. Yeah. The father's going to have to really have the dialogue with his, with his son and his wife that whatever happened, that this is where we are today. And I am a father of all of you. And you are all siblings. No matter how we got here, we're here. I mean, look, mm-hmm. you guys came, all came to me in different ways. <laughs> we never had these issues. And, and, and ours was not, not so pleasant in, in a lot of ways. I mean, we definitely, our family definitely had issues. We had, we had a, we had big dynamic going on in our family. Big dynamics. But we, this is something that would not be tolerated. No. And 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 it wouldn't be tolerated because the adults wouldn't have tolerated it. We we made sure that our kids love and accept. And it's not my half brother. It's your we're brother and sister. 
Yeah. Period. End of story. I know. I think that's something that's really interesting about us. And I've had listeners comment on it when I've mentioned it in the past, but I don't have any full-blooded siblings. Like all of my siblings were half siblings, yet we would never, ever describe ourselves in that way. We're, mm-hmm. we're siblings. All of us. We're, and, that's and, how we and, are. And you have other half siblings that are outside the house. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because you don't really say that they're my, my, my full, well, I, I, I think with Paige, she's your sister. I just say, yeah, it's my sister. Sister. But, you know, aunt, but with Taylor and his brothers, there's, there's stress. Yeah. And it's They have sad. a different dynamic. It's, it's sad because. We all have different dads and all of our dads had other children. And so each one of, you know, me and my household unit, we all have different dynamics with our siblings. Taylor's Taylor's brother tried to kill me once. It was insane. Yeah, I have no idea about that one, but I, oh, I, yeah. mean, I heard about it. But he I mean, literally came up to me. He was choking you or and something. And choked me at a country music festival and goes, Taylor's not my brother. Quit telling people that. And it's like, buddy, there was paternity tests. Grow the fuck up and quit strangling me. So there is dynamic, and, and it goes down to the parents to... to to bring this and instill it and verify. Yeah. Because they're all worried about their position is really what this is. Mike's, you know, the, the, the M is worried about his position. He's worried about the pain that his mother went through. There's all this other dynamic. There's a lot. But, like, have some fucking empathy and look outside of yourself. Like, this kid just lost his mom. His whole life is shattered. Yeah, and obviously, M went after him. To hurt him. No doubt. The full intent to just destroy him. No doubt. Despicable. Like when you are willing to just traumatize someone in that way, it's it's very similar to the story we had about the woman who destroyed her husband's late wife mm-hmm. pictures. Yeah, I remember that. And this is like these people, this is all they have left of that person. Mm-hmm. And you are so unhinged. To hurt them in such a cruel way, it blows me away. It truly blows me away. You know, the only advice that I have for him is he's got to look above all these people. You can't let them. He can't. You cannot let them own you. But he's sixteen, and he's. I what know. do you do when you have no other options? Which the top comment talks about. Yeah, I can only imagine how hard everything is right now. Your whole life has basically been flipped upside down. Is there anyone on your mom's side you could talk to? Maybe even live with for a few years until you're old enough to get your own place. I think that would be worth exploring to get yourself out of this environment that doesn't seem to be getting off on the right foot. What's the conversation that he can have with his father? We'll get there. Okay. So OP goes, it's just my grandparents on my mom's side, and they basically disowned her because my dad was married to his wife when my mom got pregnant. They're very religious and I haven't had any contact with them since I was born. They didn't even come to her funeral. So now let's go back to, to the relationship between him and, and his dad. Mm-hmm. So someone goes, you should probably talk to your dad about how you feel. This is not a good home environment at all. OP goes, I've tried, and I think he's just trying to be a good guy on both sides. He knows everyone else doesn't want me there, but it's been hard on them too. So he's trying to be mindful of that, I guess. But I feel like it's at my expense. Someone goes, it is at your expense. They haven't lost their mother. They haven't had their world turned upside down. Your father should do better than this. On to another update. Another post titled, should I move out? How do I even ask? So I posted about this in here before, but things have gotten worse. And I feel like I don't know how to navigate this. It's been about six months since I, 16 male, had to move in with my dad, 47 male, and his family after my mom died, and I still feel like his wife and my half-siblings despise me for just being there. The issue of my mom's pictures getting destroyed turned what was already a shitty situation into something that is just killing me. I ended up sleeping on the couch for almost two months because I couldn't stand the sight of my half-brother, M, after what he did to my stuff and I started carrying a backpack around the house with anything personal that I had brought from my mom's apartment, wherever I went so nothing else could be damaged. M ended up apologizing to me, but it seemed more of a show for my dad 
than an actual apology to me. My dad's wife, S, and my half-sister, A, now 15 female, still barely acknowledge me and still almost exclusively use French in the house, which I'm only now starting to pick up words and conversations of. I've always felt like a stranger in this house, and while I understand why they don't want me around, I don't know what I can do to try and make things work. The worst of it came three weeks ago when I lost my keys to the house and got stuck out in the rain after I came home. I tried calling my dad, but he didn't pick up, and I rang the doorbell as many times as I could because I saw S's car outside the house, so I knew she was home. There isn't much close by us, so I couldn't walk anywhere to wait. By the time my dad got home an hour and a half later, I was soaked and cold, and when we got inside, S just said that she was on a call and couldn't hear the doorbell ringing. I couldn't even talk to her, and just went upstairs and cried in the bathroom before going to bed. My dad apologized later for not seeing my messages sooner, but that's not really the issue here. Well, I will say he knows how to address, he, he's very mature in how he's addressing all this. I would have taken a rock and put a rock through the window and just... Just despicable, it. though. It is. Despicable. Shit fucking human. You know, the that, like the father is not stepping up to the plate at no, all here. No, asshole of a dad. Dropping the ball. He is dropping the ball on this young man. Period. I feel sick living here and can barely eat or sleep half the time. My grades are tanking and I don't feel like I can talk to anyone. I miss my mom and everyone is pretending like she never existed. And I have to basically do the same thing so nobody at home gets mad at me. Does the mother have a best friend? Let me get through this. The main issue is a week ago, my dad's best friend and his husband, who I've met a couple times and stayed with the first couple nights after I reconnected with my dad while he was trying to figure out how to bring me home heard about me being locked out of the house and asked if I wanted to come stay with them for a while. I want to say yes so bad because anywhere has to be better than where I'm staying now, but I know it's going to cause issues with my dad because he ruined his entire relationship with his family to be able to bring me home so I wouldn't have to go into foster care, and it's going to seem incredibly ungrateful. I know my dad is trying, he really is, but I don't know what I'm going to do if I have to keep living in this house until I turn 18. How do I broach the subject with him? Is trying to move out even worth it at this point, or should I just toughen up and deal with it for the next year and a half? No, I think he should should have a direct conversation with, her, with his dad and lay out his options and say, Dad, these are my options. And I, it's not that I don't appreciate what you did, but this isn't healthy for me. No. Unless you can find a way of making it healthy. I got, we, we got to make another, it's not working. No. Do you it's, agree with this? It, this is a horrendous situation that no child should have to deal with. Of course not. Getting locked out of the house in the rain for an hour and a half. The woman heard the doorbell every single time. No, she's being a bitch. Terrible. Period. Terrible fucking person. So the fact that, the, that so the, this is the father's friends? Yes. Update, should I move out? It's been about a week since I talked to my dad and I've had a couple of people message me about an update, so I figured I'd give one. I followed a couple of people's suggestions and texted my dad's friends that I wanted to leave and they ended up suggesting we all go out to lunch. I think they could both tell how nervous I was around my dad and my dad's friend, Jay, ended up being the one to bring up the idea of me moving out. My dad seemed completely blindsided by it and asked why I wanted to move out. Jay and his husband, B, reminded him about everything that's been going on at home, and I just kind of sat there. My dad seemed really upset, and it made me feel terrible because I already felt guilty about leaving. But then he just asked if I really wanted to go. I said yes, and he just immediately agreed. It kind of hit me that I wanted him to try and fight for me, to say sorry for everything that he's been letting happen, and for my dad to try and keep me at home. But he just let me go, like it was nothing. It's been hard after my mom died, and my dad's the only family I've got left. So it really didn't make me feel any better about leaving, even though I don't have to deal with my dad's family anymore. B took me back to their apartment while J went with my dad to get stuff from the house. They had set up their extra room for me already. He apologized that they hadn't been able to do this sooner and that they hoped I would like living with them. J came back with all of my things, and they kind of gave me time to decompress. I ended up sleeping for almost 16 hours because I was so exhausted. Over the last week, 
They've been really nice about making me feel at home and have talked to me about getting me into therapy to deal with losing my mom and everything that's happened at my dad's house. They're also trying to figure out how to move me into a different school so I don't have to deal with my half-sister and everyone that knew my half-brother. It's the first time in months that I feel like I can actually breathe and don't feel like I'm constantly on guard. My dad hasn't texted me much or reached out in the last week, so I don't know what's going to happen with him. But for now, I'm safe, I guess. So that's what's happened so far. Thanks for everyone that has given me advice and wished me well. It's been really hard lately, and it made me feel less alone. Poor little nugget. Hmm. Shitty dad. Fuck that dad. Not a good dad. Bad dad. Bad dad. Yeah, he's in a tough position, but there is no fucking excuse. Well, he needs to teach his kids also that there's times that we all have to accept you know, make the best of the situations and welcome things that might be out of adversity but will turn out to be a great thing. The bare minimum that that guy, the dad, should have done in this situation is said, hey, I, you know, I get you're all uncomfortable with the situation. However, this is my son as well, and I need to do better. I need and to your do better. brother. And your brother, but my son first and foremost, and I need to do right by him. He should have gotten an apartment with just him and his son to create a safe home environment. If your family cannot handle this and your family is going to be emotional and physical and fucking terrible people, then you need to get your child who just lost his mom out of that environment. That is your child, your responsibility. I I agree. Thank God these friends stepped up and came out of nowhere. They didn't even have to step up. They are just... Fucking angel humans. Holy shit. But fuck this dude. I agree. Fuck him.